Never put all your eggs in one basket. So goes the adage. But a wise man puts all his eggs in one basket and watches that basket. So goes another. The common Tonga basket is not for putting eggs, but is an everyday utensil in a home. This is another Tonga artifact that has been developed by the Tonga people prior to their displacement from the banks of the Zambezi River. How are these baskets made? <laughs> The Ilala palm for making the Tonga basket is readily available on the banks of the Zambezi River. Even the building of the Lake Kariba could not destroy this God-given raw material. How are these palms dyed? Mwiyoyo <laughs> In Binga, the art of basket making has been transformed into an organized industry that even exports the basket out of the country. This industry is managed by the Binga Craft Center. So <laughs> Pinga Craft Center was a brand child of the Pinga Road District Council. Its plan, the, what they called the Rusumbu Development Plan of 1981. Then after this, the, when the center was established through the help of the Danish, the basketry, 
gathered a lot of momentum. Why? Because there were a lot of uh, weavers than cavers. But at the same time, the cavers also did their part because uh, it was uh, men doing the carving, women doing the basketry, and also potter. From that, it changed, it changed its status into more of a community based because now it's the community that are running it. It is them that decide on the price, they decide on the uh, the artifacts they think they can sell better than the other. Then within the board we've got some also the clubs who are dotted around that binga. These clubs, they, we can't have about 33 clubs. And these clubs they have their own management committees who are represented by a delegate who comes to meet the board members so that they say out what they want. Because we realize that our basketry have a lot of designs like this one I'm holding, it may show some waves or some lightning. So it's not just putting the art, it's art with a meaning. So generally it is a life that is being perpetuated in the material culture. And at the same time also earning some, some living out of the sale of the art. We have made sure the quality matches the international standards, which is the best and when well marketed, it brings foreign currents for the country. And at the end of the day, we are also in some way feeding to the national fiscals. So for art of basket weaving, we have a lot of baskets with different designs, but at the same time all being produced from one material, which is the, the Haifa Repitazian or Ilala Pao Malal actually. Then the, for, 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 for baskets, we have some designs like this diamond, uh, when, when the weavers weave, they just put what they think is what's good for them and also what they prefer it is the, 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 the best shape. And in, normally this one is the shape of what they call seashells or mbanyina, even though it's the diamond shape. So one person will do want this one and it, what it reflects is that the, the, our ancestors used to do some trading with the Portuguese. The same uh, pattern that we get on the basket is the same pattern that we also get on our beadwork and also on our carving. What we don't forget and what we don't want to forget and what we shall not forget is that the design should remain Tonga, basically identified by the Zambezi River. So whatever is on the weave is reflecting our environmental surrounding and it is to tell a story of who we are, who we were, and who we shall be forever. So these artifacts are there to make sure we preserve our material culture.